President William Jefferson Clinton. I was personally thrilled when Jim Webb decided to run for the Senate. Today, in the press, we saw that the three major military newspapers, the Army Times, the Navy Times, the Marine Times, all said, we need a new force in Iraq and a new Secretary of Defense. Last night, last night I was in Maryland campaigning for our candidates for the Senate and for governor and campaigning against the efforts of the Republicans to suppress voters. You all read about it. Think of what that means. Well, we did a poll that says that we have 25% African American turnout, we lose. If we can cut the turnout down below 20%, the polls are tied. You know what that means? You know what that means? They're saying to these people, it's okay with us if you have a job and then you have to pay taxes. It's okay with us if your kids put on a uniform and go to Iraq or Afghanistan and fight, maybe get wounded, maybe get killed. But if you're not going to vote the way we tell you, well, we're going to try to keep you home no matter what we took from you, no matter what you gave to this country. That is wrong. Bob Perry was on the 9-11 Commission. They gave us those recommendations years ago. They have never been implemented. Every time we try to implement them, our friends in the Republican Party from the White House to the Congress say, well, we got a big deficit. We got a big deficit. Go figure, like they didn't create it, right? And you remember what Jim Webb said, it's not true that the Democrats are going to raise taxes on middle class Americans. We're going to cut taxes to help people go to college and raise their kids and take care of their elderly loved ones when they're sick. But this crowd says we not only can't afford the 9-11 Commission recommendations, they have cut college aid for the first time in my lifetime. They mandated, mandated an increase in the interest rates on student loans. We saved students $9 billion and saved the government $4 billion the way we did it, and they wound up costing the government and the students more at a time when we need help. They cut after-school programs for poor kids. They cut out the police program to put more police on the street. Oh, we have a deficit, which they created. But nothing, nothing could stand in the way of them throwing money at those of us who don't need it instead of giving it to those of you who do. And that's not class warfare. They've waged class warfare. And my class is winning it. I don't like it. This is a middle class country where poor people ought to have the dignity of work and the chance to be rewarded for their efforts. He's right about that, and you can change it, but you got to vote for Jim Webb to change it. And this business about accountability in government, I'll just give you one example. I read a story today in the news that said that this Congress, think this, this Congress spent eight times as many hours holding hearings on my Christmas list as on the no-bid contracts and the missing $9 billion in Iraq. Now we're laughing. I like to laugh. You know, it enables you to listen, but it ain't funny. They had an inspector general that went over there, a good Republican, and he did such a good job that they eliminated his job in this budget and want to bring him home. Because he did a good job, he said, guess what, we need to send some people to jail over here. They're taking, they're taking our tax money and not doing it. We, we can't give the troops body armor. We can't even give all of them good helmets. We certainly haven't armored the vehicles. There's a woman who lost her son. This is serious. She lost her son in Iraq. And she spent $7,000 on her credit card sending basic medical supplies to her unit because the kids didn't have it. Their number one priority in this last session was to spend $25 million a year for a decade to give 10,000 families more state tax relief. Now, even if you think the one half of 1% of us that owe anything, that's all that do, should be relieved of this onerous burden, which we can pay out over 14 years at 2% interest. Even if you believe that it's pressing, it's hard to say it's more important than Homeland Security for 300 million Americans, than college aid for 10 million Americans, than a minimum wage increase for 7 million Americans, than after-school programs for 1.5 million American kids. That's what they believe, though. 
because you have done all of that plus all the 9-11 commission recommendations, all of it, and have plenty of money. The campaign that has been run against Jim Webb is just the sort of most grotesque example of this formula they're running all around the country. It goes something like this. This is their message. Pretend I'm their guy. <laughs> no, no, wait, wait, wait. Okay, we really messed up. I mean, this rock deal didn't work out too good, and now we put Afghanistan at risk, and we probably shouldn't have put that horse show association guy in charge of FEMA before the FEMA. And, you know, it was embarrassing when our senior White House aide that dealt with Mr. Abramoff had to go to prison. Well, Carl Rowe didn't know him very well. He only had 485 contacts with the White House. And he's shy, Carl is. You've got to know him 486 times before he knows you. Yeah, we've got a lot of problems, but you still have to vote for us. Because my opponent is a slug, and they're going to tax you into the poorhouse. On the way to the poorhouse, you'll meet a terrorist on every street corner. <laughs> and when you try to run away from that terrorist, you will trip over an illegal immigrant. You can't vote for him. I mean, is that it? about that outrageous attack on Jim Webb's books is that somebody for the other side had to read a book. <laughs> As a candidate, Jim Webb has already done more to advance the education of those Republicans than they have in six years of time. We're laughing, but we're here at the birthplace of America, virtually in the shadow of George Washington's home. Our founding fathers pledged their lives, their fortunes, their sacred honor, not to establish a fact-blind, ideological, sanctimonious, divisive, destructive, you name it. <laughs> what did they say? They said we pledge our lives, our fortunes, our sacred honor to form a more perfect... Not that we should all agree. That's 17th century, 18th century language. What it really means is, in contradiction to all they try to do, it really means, in our language, we are not perfect. We must be humble. We will never be perfect. But we can always do better. And this government of ours establishes enough power to always change and meet the challenges of each new age with enough restraints in the rule of law to protect individual liberty and to prevent abuse of power. It only works when people faithfully believe the basic values that our founders brought to the table when they erected this edifice that brought us from that day to this. That is really what this is all about. When Jim Webb talks about national security, economic justice, and the integrity of government, it is all about our opportunity to form a more perfect union. You can do that tomorrow with Jim Webb. Thank you. God bless.